I be Genshin's newest weekly boss, Arlequina, with only a level 1 Dia. You might be thinking, what? How is that possible? With over 4 million health in total, huge one-shotting attacks to kill off even max out characters, and her secret tech that completely obliterates non-healers, she seems like an impossible challenge. But impossible hasn't stopped me before because I've just been labeling them wrongly. It's improbable not impossible. Here are the rules. Our level 1 Dia is the only character that can deal damage to the nade. I would say that she has to be the only character in the party, but as astounding as it may seem, I do have a life. I'm allowing myself the leeway that I will be able to bring in other teammates so that I can skip through parts of the battle that I've shown can be beaten with Dia alone. But just because I now have these boys back me up, it doesn't mean the firewall could be any better. Dia, however, must use the same build, same weapons, and same artifacts throughout the entire fight. There shall be no food, no potions, which I forgot even existed, and the challenge is only complete once the game surrounds its words in pristine white. But can we do it? Before we begin, here are a few of you viewers I want to shout out. If you want to have the chance of being up here, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be sure not to do repeats. With all said and done, let's get the challenge started. Oh, why am I doing this? Oh wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. We haven't even properly equipped our girl yet. So what shall she wear? We have shown that Dia is pretty handy with the Marshall Say Hunter set in our Versus Scaramouche video, which you can check out up here, but that's not going to be the best loadout this time. Back then, Scaramouche was nice enough to leave healing pads all around that could proc the four piece bonus. But here, if she so much as spits on us, we'd be considered dead. So instead of trying to stay alive, we just need to go down swinging with as much front loader damage as possible. And luckily, we have just the set for that, Shimanawa. Somehow a 2.0 artifact is still applicable in 4.8, but we'd be able to get so much utility out of the 50% normal and charge attack boost from the 4 piece. Don't worry, Dia does create enough energy to keep this alive as long as you hit your field shots. And to be honest, what perk does her burst have anyway? A 4 second window of punching like babies, especially with the, her 70% pyro res that you can't even dodge or jump without canceling the whole attack and on top of that can get you hurt during the burst animation? Yeah, that's a hard pass. Then there's the weapon. We're cranking out a lost pity and giving her her very own weapon, Beacon of the Reed Sea. The base attack and crit rate are both looking juicy for a level one character. We can at least make good use of half the weapon's passive. We can easily get the attack boost from attacking with an elemental skill, but not so much from the getting hurt part. Plus the extra HP could be helpful. I don't know, I'm too good of a gamer to get hurt and test that out. And finally, let's check out, yep, the same as always. Her talents are at a crisp, one, one, one. She doesn't even have her two passive talents and her exploration one can't even activate and Domains. I'm sure this won't be a problem later. Nope, definitely not. All right, now we can start with not even gonna let me finish. Wow. Our Lakino is a mean, lean fighting machine, and we're over here stuffing copium in our faces. There's no way we can afford to trade blow for blow because remember, we're as frail as a paper bag in a tornado factory. The fact that we can only do 2k with our strongest hit isn't doing us any favors either. Your dodge seems to be near perfect just to get to the hard part. Lucky for us, there are only four attacks we've got to worry about. We've got the playable character, Spain without the A, Samurai standoff, and Bird. Playable character and Spain without the A are the two you're going to see most often since they're the ones she does during close range and since the can't hit an inch past her fingies. When she initiates her normal attack, she will twirl in place, so step away. Get far enough and she'll only do two strikes. But if you decide to stick around, she may unleash a four hit combo or five hit one that I've honestly never seen in my time of testing. Just social distance from her with this attack and do the exact opposite for a scythe wheel attack. She charges up for some attack for so long that it could sleep before it happens, so sidestep her once it's finished. She can barely turn, so even hugging her shoulder can keep you safe. The blade's return doesn't even have hitbox, which is a nice touch. Samurai standoff is by far the worst. It only happens when you're too far away from her which could happen since she does phantom step away after and before pretty much every attack, so you better stick as close to her as possible at all times. Watch out for the edges, because if she's backing to the corner of the circular arena, she'll do a really big teleport back to the center, which can create an opportunity for a slash. If you really have to, time a dash right as she finishes her voice line. And bird. It's not much. Remember when I said she can't turn? If you run under her, she usually can't hit you, so do that, I guess. And that's it. Just normal attack for five minutes, so we've got her down to her second phase, which includes... Oh, no. Before I explain just how we're going to get past this, if you're enjoying this so far, please be sure to like, sub, and ring the notification bell to stay updated on future content. Also, be sure to check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash gameperson06. Not only do I play the games you see here, but I play a lot of other fun games too, like Valor and Honkai in It Takes Two Solo. And one more, we have our Discord, the Game Person Party. Come hop in and have a place to talk with people of similar interests. There's personalized notifications, chat rooms, and even a suggestion channel where you yourself can contribute to the growth of our channel. Come join the Gamer Person Posse. I'll be ecstatic of your arrival. 
Yeah, I should have seen this coming. For the rest of her entire fight, she will force us onto the bond of life whether we like it or not. And worse, it drains our HP whenever we have it. And since we only have a level one character, it eats up our health faster than you'd think. But it's not all that bad. See if we could somehow clear it, we'll get a feather. And if we hit her with a charge attack at the right time, she'll take huge damage, like seriously big. Compared to our flimsy hits, this is like a sucker punch in the gut. But if only we'd be able to heal on the spot. Oh, that's right. She has her second talent, right? The one that heals her whenever she hits us. Oh, right. Remember, she's staying at level 1, so she won't have access to Saltwort and True, but without that, how in the world are we going to give her the ability to heal? Man, if only she was a Catalyst user, then Prototype Amber could heal her with a burst. Wait, burst healing? I'm fairly sure I've heard that somewhere before. No, not that. Anything but that. We aren't allowed to heal with other characters, but we can switch out her equipment. And while there aren't any claymores that heal her, there is exactly one artifact set that could fix our problem. Traveling Doctor. But no, I'm not going to use such a weak set. First off, it only goes up to three stars, so I wouldn't only do no damage, but also have no HP to save. Second off, her burst is terrible. Not to mention her energy recharge, but I'm not even sure I can sustain a whole 60 energy every bond of life. Third off, I need the whole four piece set, which I always fodder into genuinely better artifacts. Where in the world am I going to get a full complete set? No, not there, no. <sighs> Finally made it. Here, a full set of traveling doctors. Happy? After some testing with some useful fruit, I was able to pinpoint exactly how much HP she would need to start with to get rid of her bond of life. So here's stats. I have HP percent, HP percent, and healing bonus, since that healed more than a third HP percent. The feather is staying as a fourth traveling doctor, while the flower will actually be a five star one. And that's the only piece that increases HP, so getting a souped up version of that is necessary. The subsets are crucial for getting as much flat HP as possible, because considering how much base HP she has, it gives her more than HP percent. All right, with her new artifact set, we're now now able to sail through the second phase, which really isn't that different from the first phase, which by the way is totally possible with this new set since all you have to do in the first phase is normal attacking her to death. Her old moves get additional attacks though. Spain without the A gets another scythe wheel, then she dashes forward in a claw grab, but once again, just go around her. Samurai standoff apparently gets another attack, but I've never seen it because just stick close to her. Bird does get a follow up slap in the cheek, so watch out for that. Playable character doesn't get any buff. Not like 4.6 needed a more busted Arlecchino. She also gets new attacks, but they're more like cinematic masterpieces that put Spin's wait time to shame. Dash through all the attacks when she's on her high wire, step outside the rectangles and circle during a blade storm, and honestly, I didn't even know this one existed. You shouldn't be worried about this one either. What's really important is this final attack. She gives you the bond of life, then spreads knives all around her that explode afterwards. Make sure you always go into this attack with the feather because this is the only chance to deal massive damage. Once you do, here's exactly what you need to do. First, Get the Bond of Life. It will start eating your health, so right after, land your charge attack to not only hurt her, but stun her as well. During this cooldown, unleash your burst to cleanse yourself and give yourself another feather. After this, get straight to work onto your next burst, and repeat this process until she's dead. If you're really picky, when she's really low, you can just normal attack her so you can keep both her burst and feather. She'll reincarnate into the demon of the Blood Moon as we finally enter... All right, we've done the Bond of Life shenanigan once already. We'll do it again. She'll do some mean hits up in your face, but soon after she'll snap her fingers and give you the Bond of Life. You should have energy, so go ahead and clear that up. Uh, wait, huh? Her Bond of Life is stronger now? Now it's that much? Clear that much HP, we'd need a whopping, uh, not even the beacon's passive, two hydro teammates, and HP food is enough to clear that. How in the world are we going to stay alive? Is this the end? No. It can't be! I've sacrificed hours upon hours of practice, strategy, and pointless artifact farming. And if all that will go to pot, if we can't make this happen, if only, if only we had enough HP. Or if we have enough energy. All right, let's do this one last time. Now that it's impossible to clean the bond of life with one burst, that means we're going to have to use two no matter how much HP we put on her. So let's just put enough HP so we can prioritize another stat. Energy recharge. If we can somehow activate her burst off cooldown, we'll be able to minimize the amount of damage that the bond of life does. Also, if we just give her just enough healing power, the bond of life can not only be overridden, but then she can also heal back the HP it ate from her. Ah, genius! We can still have HP percent and flat HP in the substats, don't worry. Well, actually, you're going to have to squeeze in for one final substat. Crit rate. Yeah, as much as it pains me, we're ditching our damage dealer and giving her the R5 Fav Claymore I had rotting on Dory. With a bit more finesse and more hours grinding for better artifacts, we come to the final loadout, Basque, in its disgusting glory. 
Okay, one more time. I'm sure we can beat her. During the fight, what's most important is that we focus on sticking close and proccing as many fast passives as possible. Get your orbs to get the burst faster. She's a lot meaner and faster here, so, so you've got to rely more on reaction time than memorization. Once the first warning pops up, you cannot let her give you the bond of life this time. After she does, nine times out of ten, she'll take to the skies and camp there, not letting you get any energy and thus cleansing yourself until she touches back down, and by that point, you're already half dead. What you need to do is very precise. At the exact moment you see her stand standing straighter, initiate the charge attack, and only follow through when you see the warning above. If you time it just right, you'll strike her when she's technically doing her big attack, so you'll not only deal massive damage, but you'll also stun her, stopping her from giving the bond of life. Don't rest now because you no longer have a feather. That means when she next hands out another serving, you're forced to accept it. Immediately use your burst once you have it, and then immediately work on your next one. Once again, she's too quick to predict her attacks beforehand, but there are sweet spots where you can get in hits for free. For example, after she slams down here, and after a huge beam attack there. Keep finding these pockets of air, and you'll have enough energy to clean yourself fully. Except, there's one final nick in our plans. While we now have the feather, the bond of life ate so much of our HP that the second cast of our burst didn't heal us back to full. Don't worry, because there's one last thing that can save us. The next time she gives you the bond of life stop her the exact same way you did the first time she won't have the chance to hurt you more while you have the chance to get another burst and heal yourself to full work fast enough and you can even charge up your energy before she hands out another bond of life and that's it you're golden it's self-sustaining too since everything happens in the same order from here on out all it requires is a speed strength and luck to make it all happen and one day this happened once you're here all you need to wait for is just the final attack. Yes, everyone. We have shown the world that beating Arlequino, oh, the so name, okay, the here, cinder right of now. two world's oh, flames with no one but a level one Dia is a mission complete. Hey, you aren't supposed to see this. Uh, so what if I needed a little help? If you really want me to truly solo Arlequino with Dia, come down and tell me in chat. But anyway, thank you so much for watching till the end. I appreciate your determination. If you like the challenge and want to see me do more, please leave a like, sub, and ring that notification bell for more. Also be sure to check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash gameperson06 where I not only play the challenges see here, but also jam out with other games like Valorant, Honkai, and It Takes Two. If you're going, consider visiting the Gamer Person Party where you can chat with friends, hang out, and make the server a better place. And finally, make sure to check out these YouTube creators. Their challenge videos are amazing and they inspired my own. Until next time, have a good day, night, etc. Uh...